This morning on The Dish, Chef Gavin Kaysen. His debut restaurant, Spoon and Stable, is named for the horse stable that occupied the space in the early 1900s, along with Kaysen's affinity for making off with spoons from restaurants he's dined in. It's a habit on display at the restaurant, which he picked up to memorialize special meals. Kaysen's hospitality group now includes two more restaurants, local bakeries, and a catering business that serves some of the local sports teams. But the project that's closest to home for Kaysen is just that, a self-published cookbook. We traveled to the chef's hometown to taste it all. At Spoon and Stable in downtown Minneapolis. It's a little different than cooking for my kids. Chef Gavin Kaysen exquisitely pairs his expertise in French cuisine. No fire yet. With Midwest seasonality. Along on one Brussels. And sensibilities. And so the chips that we serve with this are these really great Soka chips. Case in point, Kaysen's bison tartare. Isn't that great? So we've had that on since we opened, which has just been a really fun dish. Kaysen knows the Midwest palate because he shares it. Spoon and Stable is the native son's triumphant return after an acclaimed run at Danielle's Cafe Balloud in New York, where he earned a James Beard Award for Rising Star Chef. All right. So pasta course, so it's a caramelly pasta stuffed with celery root, lots of lemon zest, hazelnuts, fried rosemary, and pecorino romano. Enjoy, enjoy. He'd earn a second Beard Award for Best Chef Midwest at Spoon and Stable, which instantly upped the Twin Cities culinary game. So, duck breast. Kaysen dry ages his duck for 10 days and serves it with mong greens, hoisin puree, and shinko pear. Enjoy. Thank happy, you. The happy dance. <laughs> it was, kind yeah, of, that, that was. was. The happy dance. <laughs> After a honey and cream cake for dessert, we dished about the question Kaysen says he's asked most often. Do I cook at home? So? A lot. I cook a lot at home. Even though you spend the bulk of your evening here, that's still enjoyable. So different. You know, here it's full chef white apron. Right. Formality in a way, discipline in every sense of the word. At home, it's... Freedom, peace, and just joy. Got to keep your butter. Here, he gets to cook for himself, his family, okay. I know. and best friend, Rosie, who eagerly serves as a taste tester. I'm going to kind of show you how I cook when I'm at home. Two and a half years ago, when Kaysen and his diners were stuck at home, he began to cook for them remotely. Hey, everyone. Welcome to GK at Home. <laughs> hosting a series of online cooking classes. Here's the deal. And we did a little over 150 people on that first class. The second class, there's 300 people. The third class, there's 600 people. The fourth class, there's over 1,000 people. Butcher the chicken, go slowly. OK, I'm going to go slow. <laughs> but we could cook together. We could laugh together. We could like just escape from what was outside and what was the distraction and focus on just this nourishment and this idea of restoring our souls through the power of food. By the end, Kaysen had cataloged roughly 80 recipes. And as a result, we have sort of this diamond that came from it. He mined the results for his first cookbook, aptly titled At Home. Kaysen divides the book by the four seasons. This is fantastic. Just, a, just your normal afternoon spread, right? Well, casual spread. <laughs> for us, Kaysen whipped up a taste from each. Crispy chicken thighs with vegetables and endive salad for the fall. Pulled pork tacos for summer. For wintertime, cavatelli pasta with squash and Brussels sprouts and his grandmother Dorothy's pot roast. Which she made for us all the time. The key for Grandma Dorothy's pot roast, which is in the book, is that she uses rutabaga as part of the vegetables. So it's not a potato starch. Okay. So it slowly thickens the sauce a little bit, and it also makes it a little bit sweet. And this is also one of the most popular dishes. At Spoon and Stable. At Spoon and Stable. Really, it's like, it's so nostalgic for me. Do you have a favorite recipe that's in the book? Is that, I mean, obviously hers have a special place in your heart. What makes me feel good about the book, honestly, is that like everything that's in it, I've, I have cooked at home. And I still cook it at home. Kaysen shares those meals right here with some of his favorite dining companions. Wife Linda, sons Emil, Julius, and Crosby, 
And of course, Rosie. By the way, Rosie wants more. The dog, the dog has been the star of the day. I mean, Rosie. And she wants more. Rosie wants, Rosie wants everything she can have. She knows, she knows the jam. Almost as hard for me to resist. Dessert from the spring section, sunbuckle cookies. Another recipe from Grandma Dorothy. So this was the first thing that I made with her when I was seven. Yeah. This was sort of like the epiphany dish for me. This is why we have you as yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Kaysen says that simple cookie is what sparked his interest in hospitality. I was probably the only grandson in the kitchen with her, uh, cooking with her all the time and baking. And I just remember everybody stopping and running inside and having this incredible amount of joy and excitement. And I thought to myself, like, seven ingredients did that? And it was a really, really pivotal moment of my life. I knew then subconsciously that I wanted to do something in service for others the rest of my life. A career that started at age 15 making Subway sandwiches has allowed Kaysen to feed others while nourishing his own soul. From prestigious kitchens in Europe and New York to his own now in Minneapolis. True. What did your grandmother think? She was always blown away with the fact that the cookies got me to this point of like, <laughs> now I love to cook. It just really warmed her heart always to know that food, which is what she taught me, really gave me a spirit of my life. That love of food, has any of that changed for you now, working in the industry as long as you have? No, no, I love it so much. It's just so great to be able to cook for people and to serve people. Whether it's at the restaurant or here on a, on yeah. a Sunday. Yeah. The only difference here is there's just less, there's a little bit less stress of putting out 200 plates of food. <laughs> you know, I got to put out six plates of food. It's fun because for, for the boys, they'll, you know, I mean, they, they'll be downstairs playing with their friends and come up and it's like, you know, a spread on the table. And they're like, yeah, this is, this is normal. Everybody's coming to the kitchen. Right. House. Everyone's, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That's okay. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> so, a Chef did send the sunbuckle cookies. Weather got in the way, so I apologize. But, Chef, take a look. You're not the only one who can take spoons. I have a very fond memory now of Spoon and Stable. We told you that's the reason he takes these spoons. One for each of us. Oh, thank because you. Because one day, the two of you yeah. will get to Spoon and Stable Aww. And you will have a taste of Chef Kaysen's wonderful food there. Really is special, really is delicious. And Chef, I, I see why you kind of keep the spoons to the side because you know people like me are going to take them. These are I got three of them like too. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> Can we go on GoPro dog cam? When I know, with there? Rosie, I love right? that. Fantastic. That's that Jake Barlow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that Jake Barlow. Getting Rosie.